What's up guys, welcome back to our CICS study section. Today we're gonna go over chapter five and six. It is about adaptations to anaerobic and aerobic endurance training. Um, I figured it would be easier to go over chapter five and six at the same time because they kind of go hand in hand and I think it's easier for us to compare um, how our body adapts to these two totally different types of training um, on the same day. So here we go. All right, so here's the first slide. Adaptations to anaerobic training, and this is chapter five. Um, anaerobic training is stressing the CP, creatine phosphate system, and our glycolytic system. Glycolytic system. So we're leaving out the oxidative system and we're stressing these two, right? Um, adaptations of motor units is the first thing we're gonna talk about, and motor units are basically a combination of an alpha motor neuron and a muscle fiber and that makes up a motor unit. Um, so these are some of the most important adaptations to note. There's increase in recruitment and firing rate, greater overall synchronization of neural discharge when that happens. And um, another thing that we need to, to pay attention to is the size principle. So here, if you look at this graph over here, uh, which is taken from the book, you can see that there's type 1 muscle fibers and type 2 muscle fibers. Now understand that type 2 muscle fibers tend to be bigger and they take more to recruit or they have a higher threshold for recruitment. That's why they are up here where the threshold for recruitment is high versus type 1 muscle fibers that tend to be smaller in size are down here and the recruitment threshold is low. So just keep that in mind. Um, in terms of neuromuscular reflex, there's a positive impact on reflex when you partake in anaerobic training consistently. And EMG studies show that there is cross-education happening. So if you train one side, um, like I said, consistently, you can see the same effects or positive effects on the other side. However, if you are an untrained individual, um, you're gonna have more force output with one upper extremity or lower extremity for that matter um, versus two or both extremities, uh, just for untrained individuals though. And then the opposite is true for trained individuals because you're gonna see some bilateral facilitation <clears throat> Sorry, and that just means that there's an increase in voluntary activation in the agonists for bilateral or both sides. So if we look at the chart now, um, you can see that everything that's responsible for power and strength is going to increase, like muscular strength, anaerobic power, rate of force production, vertical jump, sprint speed. Everything increases, right, or improves, um, as opposed to endurance, um, performance which has no change or increases slightly right and that's right here um, looking at the muscle fibers same thing here everything that has to do with the oxidative system um, or it carries oxygen or um, efficiently diffuses everything that's responsible for efficiently diffusing oxygen um, through our tissue is not going to change or even decrease. So if you look at the mitochondrial density, myofibril density, um, capillary density, all these things are going to show no change or decrease. However, everything else is going to increase because our muscle fiber is only going to get um, bigger and more stronger with anaerobic system. So there's that. Um, enzyme activity and metabolic energy stores, I like to tie them together because um, like I talked about in earlier chapters, our metabolic system is going to become more efficient with anaerobic training. So overall, they're going to increase or improve. Connective tissue, not so much with anaerobic training, but um, it improves more with aerobic training like we'll see in later chapters. So, you know, it may increase. And then also keep in mind body composition, percent body fat decreases, and therefore, of course, the fat-free mass is going to increase. All right, so moving on to looking at muscular adaptations, your muscle is going to hypertrophy. It is going to get bigger, 
and enlargement of your cross-sectional area, fiber cross-sectional area CSA is responsible for that. Um, you're going to see increase in all this here within the muscle fiber and the muscle fiber itself is going to grow in number, right? So that's the third bullet here. The way that we stress our body um, in terms of anaerobic training is by stressing our mechanical and both mechanical and metabolic. Also, if you remember type 1 muscle fiber, um, type 2 X muscle fiber, type 2A is in the middle, kind of does both. So with anaerobic training, ironically, um, type 2 X muscle fibers um, become type 2A muscle fibers with high intensity resistance training. All right, um, with bone, um, of course, with mechanical loading, um, bone remodeling happens, it's the Wolf's Law, and so um, it increases bone mineral density. All right, so I think this is the uh, final slide for adaptations. Um, tendon, ligaments, and fascia, basically everything gets better in terms of anaerobic training with tendons, ligaments, and fascia. Okay, so keep that in mind. You guys can read this here. Um, but there is uh, an increase in stiffness that occurs with anaerobic training. All right. Um, with hormones, the hormone receptor changes. There is an acute regulation of androgen receptor contents. And also keep in mind, yes, that's true, but if it becomes chronic elevation and anabolic hormones, so it um, upregulates or increases throughout a long period of time, it can become counterproductive, is all this is saying here. Um, cardiovascular and respiratory, this applies more so um, for aerobic endurance training, right? Because like I said, it, that's what's stressing our oxidative system. So yes, um, there is improved ventilation efficiency, and yes, there is reactive hyperemia. Um, that just means that our muscles need more oxygen, so more blood, which carries the oxygen, flows to the muscle. But more to come on the next chapter. Um, so looking at this chart here, there are four stages regarding... Um, fatiguing right so when you overtrain the first stage is going to be acute fatigue um, that's only going to last a couple days and it's normal there's no effect or increase it even increases sometimes um, our performance because we are stressing our body and meeting the demands there's functional overreaching um, which lasts days to weeks and this is temporary all right but it may decrease our performance or even have us return to baseline. There's non-functional overreaching, which is a little more serious. Things start to really show up here, um, but that's going to last weeks to month. And you look at every system here, neuroskeletal, uh, muscle, metabolic, cardiovascular, immune, everything kind of starts to show here with non-functional overreaching stage and then finally there's overtraining syndrome which is of course going to decrease your performance because you're doing too much and this is going to last a couple months to even a couple years all right so that was chapter five that was kind of quick but i covered the most important points in this chapter and let me know if you have questions uh, we're going to dive right into chapter six now so looking at adaptations to aerobic endurance training, like I mentioned in the previous uh, chapter, we're stressing the oxidative system. And so let's define a couple things here first, um, like we did before. Cardiac output is the amount of blood pumped in one minute. So that's, of course, going to be liters per minute. Stroke volume, blood pumped in one beat, right? So liters per beat. Um, so in the stuck volume and the volume that's measured after our heart pumps out all the blood out right so how much blood is left in the heart that's our edv and this increases significantly with aerobic endurance training heart rate um, we're probably very familiar with that it's how many beats per minute 
and so if you um, you can do the equation but it cancels each other out and so it ends up being cardiac output equals stroke volume times heart rate all right so oxygen uptake our oxygen our body is gonna demand more oxygen with endurance training and so that's going to of course increase um, blood pressure ventricular contraction is when your heart pumps out all the blood we kind of talked about it with um, EDV here systolic is when your heart pumps out how much pressure is in your arterial walls versus in diastolic volume or diastolic uh, blood pressure is when your heart fills up how much pressure is in those arterial walls so just a couple definitions um, systolic pumped diastolic filling okay um, respiratory response a um, couple other definitions here minute ventilation how many air do you breathe per minute and tidal volume it's called TV is a total volume and, and it increases with endurance training all right so looking at chronic adaptations to aerobic exercise we're going to increase all of this in gonna increase maxogen <laughs> I said maxogen increase max oxygen uptake so like I said our body is going to require and demand more oxygen and therefore is going to increase our max oxygen uptake right but our heart is very smart it becomes more efficient in pumping the same amount of blood with less heartbeat so less heartbeat is called bradycardia so that's what's here and increase in max card output overall is going to happen like I said with improved stroke volume so it's pumping out even more blood than it's used to but lower heart rate bradycardia right less work all right physiological adaptations to aerobic endurance training this is the exactly um, same chart it's the exact same chart um, that we saw with anaerobic so everything's going to be pretty much the opposite so looking at endurance it's going to increase aerobic power increase and everything else has to do with power and strength so don't pay too much attention to that muscle fiber we're looking at things that are responsible for diffusing oxygen efficiently and carrying oxygen so capillary density mitochondrial density all this is going to increase so that's the most important thing enzyme activity and metabolic energy storage like I said our metabolic system is going to learn how to work more efficiently so it's safe to say that all this is going to improve and increase connective tissue um, ligament strength and tendon strength is going to increase um, bone density um, no change or increases so your BMD or bone mineral density is more likely to improve with loading and that's anaerobic training not endurance right um, body composition um, pretty much the same thing percent body fat decreases but surprisingly fat free mass um, no change all right so this is our last slide for today um, how do we become more efficient at aerobic endurance training meaning how do we maximize our results right so there's some legal ways to do it and some illegal ways to do it but we'll discuss the legal way first altitude so you go train um, somewhere or some place where it has a high altitude like Denver for example is a very popular spot for a lot of aerobic endurance training athletes because of these reasons it increases pulmonary ventilation at rest and during exercise it increases your tidal volume your hemoglo hemoglobin is responsible for carrying your oxygen in your blood and it increases diffusing capacity of O2 oxygen through pulmonary membranes so all this is going to improve your efficiency also another way to do it is hyperoxic breathing um, this is breathing in oxygen enriched gas mixture during rest breaks so you might have seen NFL players or sock players um, wear those masks or boxers that's part of hyperoxic breathing and then finally blood doping um, this is illegal so artificially increasing red blood cell count and um, like I said red blood cell 
and especially hemoglobin is responsible for carrying your oxygen and diffusing it through the tissue which makes you a better endurance athlete at the end of the day and so this is artificially increasing your red blood cell and one way to do it if you want to try it just know that it's illegal is to administer EPO and that's erythropoietin and that is what stimulates the red blood cell production I was just kidding about trying it and if you do try it let me know how it goes but I am not responsible for you trying this if you end up trying all right so that is it for today thank you for listening and watching like I always say if you have any questions please feel free to leave it in the comment section down below and I'll be happy to answer them thank you guys